they did something for us. They're here every time. And you know what I wanted to say that a pastor's appreciation is not just a month. And then in every other month we forget about them. Or every other month we, you know, they're just there. That we just take them for granted. It's every day. Pastor's appreciation is every day. Appreciate something you give uh, honor to. You give, and I love, love, love them. Them pastor's appreciation envelopes. If you guys didn't get one, get one and give a seat to your pastor. Give one to your pastor. If you haven't started, give, give, give to your pastors this morning because that was something that God put in our hearts. Not, not somebody that we went in the back and said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to tell them. No, that was something that God did. And he, he gave us that desire. Amen. Put that, tell them. Honor, honor the, honor your, honor the elders. Honor that. I love that scripture. And I even have it in the room over there. And on the envelopes, it's First Timothy 5.17, if I'm not mistaken. It says, our elders are worthy of double honor. Double honor. And, and the Amplified Version, it says it in there. It says our financial blessing or something like that. I'm like, wow, God, that was amazing. Read it. Read it for yourselves. It was in the Amplified Version. And I love that one because it kind of it kind of goes further and beyond what these ones kind of say. You know, they say worthy of double honor. But that one kind of goes further and explains it and breaks it down for you guys to understand. It said worthy of financial, financial blessings. Bless them. And not just financial, to be here for them. Because I promise that they would rather, I promise, I know my pastors, they would rather you be here. They would rather be putting the word of God in you to doing that than, than having any money come in. Just letting you hear the word. Letting what God, God would give to their hearts. Not saying that that's not right. You know, not, not to do something of, if someone's wor worthy of hire, if someone, they worked for you, you want to bless them, you're going to bless them, because that's the right thing to do, amen, but I know that that's not their heart, I know that, and I see it, we live with them, I know that that's not their heart, amen, and and I know, but but it, it does say that worthy of people who do something, people, who, not just people, but elders, the, the, our pastors, they, they deserve to be blessed, Amen. They're not just people. They're not just, um, you know, Joe Blow, you know, somebody that just comes to church. No, there are pastors this morning. And I want to say thank you guys. And I know that I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I know that God is good. And I know that, that I love God with all my heart. And I thank you guys um, for being here, not only for my pastors, but for my mom and dad. And I, and I see them. I see them when they hurt, and I see them when they're happy. And I want you guys to understand that you guys, we need you to be involved. We need you to be here, to be here for them. Saying that as as a daughter, as a leader, we need you guys to be behind them. It's so hard to lift somebody up by yourself, and when you have other people. It's so much easier. I remember my mom did a message that had so many weights on her. And I was thinking of that the other day. But when there was other people, it got easier and easier and easier. And everybody took the load. That's what a church is. That is exactly what a church is. And when they have to be here by themselves, that is extremely hard. Have you guys ever worked by yourself? And you know how hard it is. And it, but if you have other people, thank you, God. If you have other people, it's easier. You get done faster. The job gets done. You get more and more involved. And that's what we need you guys to be here. I ask you guys, and I, I pray that God would put that in your heart. A longing to serve. A longing to be here. When they need us, they need us. When it, God put them here for a reason. And I remember that I, I, I wrote a, I was just looking at it, and I wrote a, I wrote a letter uh, in 2015 to them, and I know that we've had a couple hard years, you know, as as I grew up and as I knew um, different things that were going on in the church, I knew how hard, you know, it, it was when we see people walk out, and when you see people hurt your pastors, not only your mom and dad, but when you have to see them hurt, hurt your pastors and you, and you, when we go home with them, how we see their hearts grieving, not because somebody left, but that was a sheep, and that's what God was showing me the other day, he was showing me, do you know how hard it is 
for a, sh a, a shepherd to how to do his flock. How one goes, how one goes, and you're like, no, don't go that way. You know, don't go that way. There's lions. There's there's bears. There's some. There's somebody that's gonna get you. Don't go that way. And the sheep, they're so funny. We went to the zoo. And they're just like they're just there, you know, and they're trying to get them. The sheep. And God was just showing me this, and I'm like, God, that's what our pastors do. That's what our pastors do. They try to do the flock. They try to do that. And then you see others leave and others go and others talk so bad about our pastors and those that those that, that hold their blessings and don't give to the church and, and don't give. That's hard. That's really hard when you see that, you know, and, and, and as a leader and, and, and just trying to understand, gee, God, you know, that, that's hard. And they've done this for so many years. So many years our pastor's been here, and I'm just like, gee, God, help our pastors. That should be on our daily list to help pray for our pastors. Our pastors go through so much hard times. You think the devil comes after us? The devil goes after our pastors harder to break them down. And I know that our, the devil come, came out, comes after this church hard, really, really hard. And and man, it, it's it's hard. It's hard to to pastor a church. And to see, and to see, even us to see different things and, and be like, man, you know, why, why did that happen? You know, why did they do that? But I, I just want to thank God for our pastors, and I just want to tell them, thank you. Amen. I just really want to tell them, thank you for being here. Thank you, even when it hurts, even when they tell us stuff that hurts, even when they tell us, no, don't do that, or you know what, you should have done this. Or you know what, this, you should have done this, or that, that, or, and even when they say no, that, it hurts when somebody says no, or when you get scolded, amen, but God didn't, God didn't put elders and leaders here to, you know, to wipe our tears and to patty cake, and are you okay? No, he, he wanted them to get them, he got to get them sheep, get over here, you know, come here, stay in here. Don't go out there. You know, I know what's out there already. That's what that's what shepherds do. And these are our shepherds, and we have to we have to give them worthy of double honor. And it is hard sometimes. It is hard sometimes. But you know what? They are our pastors, and I just want to tell them that we love them. We're here, and I, 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 as a congregation and as a church, we're here we're behind them. And, 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 and don't give up. Amen. Don't give up. Amen. Don't give up. Even when there's three people here. Yeah. Even when there's four people here on Sunday night. Don't stop that. Then. Don't stop Sunday night church. Yeah. Don't yeah. stop prayer. Even when there's two people here. I, I said that last year. You know what? Even if it's just me, I'll be here. I'll be here for them. I'll be here for my pastors. Because they're not only my mom and dad. They bless me. God bless me with pastors. Don't Amen. stop. Don't stop. And even if it's even if it's hard, because it is hard, and it's very hard sometimes. Amen. But don't stop. Amen. I want to read this really fast, and then I'm done. Amen. And I want to thank Andrea too. Andrea's helped me so much, and and she just blessed us, and she put all that up there, and you know she didn't have to, and and I thank her so much for her and her husband being here. And, 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 and giving to our church. Thank you guys. Thank you. And each and every one of you guys. Thank you for being here. For what you do when you think nobody sees you. I say thank you this morning. When you're in the back or when you're teaching. Or when you're doing things running around. And nobody says thank you. Thank you. I thank you. You know, Because I, I know that you guys are the reason why we're here this morning. Amen. 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 It says Pastor Vince and Pastor Susan. I know I read this. But I'm going to read it again because God's word never fails and it never goes void and it, it's never old. It says, Pastor Vince and Pastor Susan, I wanted to let you know that Pastor's Appreciation Day is not just a month, it's every day of the year. For everything you do for us all the time, every, and every day, every service, and let God use you use you guys in the good and in the bad and in the hard and blessed times as a church or as an each individual will have um, a shepherd that God has placed in our lives Jeremiah 315 I know it must I know it must be a privilege and be a, and um, I know it must be a privilege to be a pastor 
to see all the wonders of God and to be the one of God that God chose to lead his people. But also the hardest job and responsibility to be placed on two people like yourselves, to see all to see all the people come and go and watch lives saved, healed, and delivered, and watch uh, people go out the door, not only leaving the church, but leaving God's placement to be here. And um, and some and some of the, and some the devil has took out to be with him, sick, broken, and even death. To look on them to see God's plan and desire to be called this child and choose a different plan. Proverbs 16, 25, as your daughter and as a leader in the church, I apologize for those who hurt you, for those who have left, not only you, but God. I know God did not make a mistake choosing you guys to be our pastors of New Home Ministries, Pueblo. I know God has not forgotten or turned away from you. It's Hebrews 6, 10. I'm not sure when his timing is to bring forth his vision he has given us as a church, but it's coming. As we, as we stand, no matter how hard it is, sometimes that God will always have his hand on our ministry and our pastors because our God is greater. Thank you everyone for being a part of our church and standing behind our pastors. I pray that I have the same heart and desire as our pastors have. And do and do everything with our full hearts in whatever we do in this ministry. Colossians 3.23 To bless our pastors like if we are doing it for God himself. We actually are. He placed, he placed and blessed them in our lives for a reason. Do not let the devil pull you away or tell you lies about those two individuals because he knows the plan God has for our ministry and he would love nothing more to pull you out of the will of God and to make our church go forth. Till Jesus comes back, we will be here reaching and doing what God has called us to do. Thank you, our pastors, for everything you do for us as a church and, God, and as God's leaders to lead us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 We're going to dismiss the little ones, I guess. Lord, amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for the word of God. We thank you for this opportunity, God, to come to hear your word. Father, Lord God, to fellowship with one another, God, and to just honor you, Lord, to love you, Lord, this morning, and thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. Father, we ask you bless this time, Lord God, and bless your people, Lord God, this morning, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Would you shut that, please? Amen. I entitled this message, something God dropped in my heart this, just last night or this morning, it says we thank God for you. Although October is this designated as a pastor's appreciation month, <clears throat> I, wanted you, I wanted you to know today as the, as, the, as the people of New Hope Ministries that we, Pastor Susan and I, do appreciate you. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. 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 And I wanted you. I wanted to know, you to know that you know. I mean, what the word appreciate means. Uh, 
I got the definition, and what it means is to recognize the, the full value of, the full worth of. Some of the synonyms or the words that mean the same was the word appreciate means value. Now I want you guys to think about this when you're thinking about not just your church or your pastors, but one another. Your family, your wife, men, your, your husbands, ladies, your children, children that are here, your parents. I want you to know what appreciate means. It means that you value them. It means that you treasure them. Remember he said, where your treasure is there will your heart be also? Yeah. That you, that you uh, admire them. That you respect them. That you hold in high regards. That you think highly of, or that you think uh, much of. Amen? Appreciate. That's what that means, to value, to... to, to, to to think highly of, to, uh, and I want you to know that, that and like Naomi said, you know, uh, I, Andrea texted me last night about 11 or something, can you let me in the church? I'm like, what are, you, what are you going to the church for? Oh, I have to go set up for tomorrow. Then this morning at 8.50, can you let me in the church? I'm like, again? Won't you sleep? Are you with me? And, and Al, yesterday, she's always bothered me, Master, let me in the church. <laughs> what for, Al? Got to clean, Master. And, and you know what I mean? And just those of you that are here, you know what I mean? That even, even every single one of you. Yeah. You know, I was blessed this morning when I seen Clarence walk in. Yeah. Amen. Clarence is a part of, he's always been a part of my life, but yeah. he's like a brother, you know, to me. And, and he's a part of our church, whether he's here or not. Right. You know, he's a part of our church. And you know what blessed me this morning is, is, is to see Clemente here. Yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. 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 He's a part of our family. He's a part of our church. Yeah. And he said, I, I want you to know, Pastor, that I appreciate you know, all you've done for me. Yeah. And sometimes that just means so much yeah. to see people that, that, that appreciate things you've done for them yeah. and didn't forget about you. And I said, man, there's so many people that I appreciate that have walked away from our ministry, that have said things, that have hurt us. And you know what? I want you to know something. The thing about family is that we, we're we weird. <laughs> I was thinking, I went to the bathroom, and I'm thinking in the bathroom, I said, man, thank you for our dysfunctional family. <laughs> Because we, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, even though we're, we're a church, you know what I mean, even though we're here and we're saved, we're just, we, we got dysfunctional family, we, we, we got problems, we got issues, that's why God saved us, you know, we're not perfect, and I, I wish our church was perfect, maybe the other ones are, and we're not, but, but you know what I mean, it's like, we're not perfect, we, we got problems, we got issues, and the thing that a lot of people don't understand, and maybe you'll learn this, and I'm sure some of you have, is that even in a marriage, even in a family, even in, in a, a mixed family, yeah. you with me? That there are going to be times where you fight. Yeah. There's going to be times where you yeah. can't stand one another. Yeah. There's going to be times, but you always come together again and say, I'm sorry. Yeah. Forgive me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm here. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, you know and you, when you work things through, that's what a family does. I don't know what kind of family that most churches or people or Christians come from, but, you know, I mean, any family that I know of, you, you, you have problems, you have issues, nobody's perfect. No husband, no wife, no children, no parents, nobody's perfect. You know, and even a church, you know, you got a church that, you know what I mean, you got so much different variety and so much different attitude and so much different feelings and emotions and, you know, all this different stuff, you know what I mean? And you have to work together and become a body, become a unit and function and work together and go forward. And you know what I mean? And it's hard. Yeah. It's hard, you know what I mean? We've been doing this as a church for 22 years, going on 22 years. You know what I mean? And it, and it is hard. We've, but, but there's so many people that I appreciate that aren't here today, you know? Uh, you know, one of them, I was thinking, gee, I wish my son was here. And I know he's probably here, he might be on his way, he might be sleeping upstairs or something, you know. But even, even he's a part of our church. 
you know. Uh, my daughters, Naomi, or Paulette and Alicia, I say them because they're not here, you know, and, and, and they were a part of our first congregation, our first, you know, and, and you know, they're in Seattle, Paulette and Alicia in Santa Maria in California, and, and they're, they're just, you know, they're, they're living their own lives, they're, they're, they've married and went off, and, but they're still a part of our church. They're still a very important part of our ministry, you know, and, and uh, you know, and, 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 and Pastor Nathan, I was thinking about Nathan, and I said, you know, Nathan was a very important part of my life for, for many, many years. And even though he's not here today, him and his wife and his family, you know, they're still important to me. It's like a son, you know, I mean, that, that, you know, you'll never get rid of them, you know, they'll always be in your heart, no matter what you feel, no matter if you get angry at them or they get angry at you, that they're still an important part. He helped me build this church. Amen. He helped me establish this ministry. He stood by my side for 17 years, and sometimes you miss that, you know? Uh, and people that helped us, and you know, I'm thinking just so many people that have been with us throughout the years, you know, and, and, and my mother-in-law, you know, I stood there, and my mom, you know, that is, that is, you know, she's in a, she's in a rehab home now, not for drugs, <laughs> for a stroke, you know, and you have to realize how, um, how much that impacts me to see that she was such an important part of our church for so many years. She did so much, she did more than most people that were in their 30s and 20s at 70 years old, you know, still on the phone calling for Mexican dinners and doing everything she did and giving, man. Huh? She didn't give much, but she gave a lot financially. She loved each and every one. She still does. She always talks about the church and you and, 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 and you know, she says, oh, Sister So-and-so came by, and Alex came by, and she said, and she's, we just talked, and she said, I, it was just a blessing, and Sister Angela came by, and you know what I mean, and, and, and others that have went to see her, and different things, and you know, it's just a blessing for her, but she's an important part of our church, you know, and to see her, you know, sick and fading away, you know, is, 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 is not easy, because she's one of the most important women in my life. Amen. You know, and you, you know, t my wife came up to me now and just told me. She said they called, said they're taking your mom to the hospital. That something's wrong with her, and, and she's having symptoms of stroke and this and that. And you know, and, you know, what can I do? My job is to come and minister to you. Amen. My job is to preach to you. Amen. My job, you know, what I mean, I know God's in control. Amen. No matter what happens, even if she passed away, I know God's in control. I, I'm not worried about it. Because I already know her desire. I already know where she wants to be. And it's not here anymore. She wants to be with Jesus, you know. And I think that she's been stubborn there, but it's her life, you know. And, and uh, you know, and so many people have helped us build this church, you know. Not just you that are here today. And I want you to know how much each and every one of you, every time Sharon, you and your mom come through the church, that's Jerry and his wife and his family, you know what I mean? And every single sister, uh, you know what I mean, uh, Rosalie, and, you know, a, a blessing when her and Vicky came to our church. You know, to be honest with you, when they came to our church, I felt, humi I felt humbled because I thought, gee, they went to praise one of the biggest, supposedly the best churches in Pueblo. Why would they come here? Why would they lower themselves to come here? I didn't feel worthy to be their pastors. Because I thought, you know, they, they, they were somewhere better. Why would they go backwards? You know? And, and, and you know what I mean? And just, you know, Sister Cindy, when you came to our church, you, you're a blessing. You know? And I don't know what you feel or, or anything like that, but you, you, you always bless my life. Amen. And you're a part of this church. I don't care what the devil says. Amen. You and your family, every single one of you. You know, every every one of you, even the youth, the young kids that come, you know, and, 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 and everyone, you know, that gives and you pay your tithes, or even if you don't, you still give something, you know, and you, and you show up, and, and you're just here, you know, and you help us, 
me and my wife, you help us. And, and it ain't easy. It's hard, man. I'm telling you, I've been going through one of the hardest times I've ever been in my life. I've never been here before, and it's scary. It's scary for me to be here. I don't know what I'm going through. My personal life, in my, in my heart, in prayer, and maybe it's this month, maybe the enemy's put a full-blown attack on my life, but, but it's, it's hard. You know, and I don't know how much I can say that to you, you know what I mean? And I don't mean to say it to, for you to feel sorry for me either. I don't mean that. I'm not a person to feel, want your sympathy or want your, oh, pastor, it's going to be, I don't know, I mean, I'm not like that. But I want you to know it's been hard. There's been times where I felt like just quitting and giving up or running away, you know. And, 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 and it's not like me to do that, you know. And, and to put my wife through stuff in our personal lives, just the way I feel, my emotions and different stuff like that, I think she deserves so much better than that, Amen. you know? And it's just, you know, it's just hard, you know? And, 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 but I want you to know how much we appreciate you guys, because without you, we wouldn't have a church. Without you, you know, who are we going to preach to? The chairs? And I know there'd be, you know, God will always provide people, but I want you to know that, you know, God brought you here, and, 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 and you know, he, he made us a family. Amen. And, you know what I mean? And, and whether you want to or not, you know, I said, first time you're here, you're a visitor, second time you're family. That's it. You might get yelled at. You might get a broom handed to you and say, come on, man. You know? Or, or you, know, you, you know, whatever it is, you know what I mean? But, but we're a family, and that's what we do, and we don't run, and we don't, you know, we don't quit on each other. You know what I mean? We don't do that. You know what I mean? As mad as you can get, you do not quit. Amen. And we respect and we honor one another. Yeah. We don't demand you to do something that we don't uh, 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 do ourselves. Amen. You know what I mean? And, and you know what I mean? Sometimes you may not feel like you She said maybe you have to Sometimes you don't feel like you get that power out or any, anybody else that helps. You don't get that power on your back and, 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 and oh, good job and stuff like that. And it's, you know... It's just like, you know, do you do that in the middle of war? Do you stop and, you know what I mean, and, 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 and they're shooting bullets and they're doing all this to tell somebody what a great job they're doing, man, you get down, what are you doing, come on, fire back, you know. I mean, you, you got to understand we're in a battle here and, 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 and it's, it's, it's crazy, you know. And I, you know, I wish, I wish serving the Lord was just easy and fun and, and you know what I mean? Had all the money we wanted and, and, and everything like that. And, but it's not, it's hard. Yeah. There's times you're going to go through times where you, man, you do get your lights shut off yeah. with me. And, 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 and you do get thrown out of your home. Yeah. You have nowhere to go and you got to scrounge, you got to find somewhere, you got to stay on somebody's couch or, 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 you, or something. You know what I mean? And there's hard times as a Christian. If you remember, who was it that was reading? Maybe it was the lady, some of you ladies that went to the conference, I think it was the lady that was talking in the morning, and she was talking about the Hebrews chapter 11, she said where, the, where, where we read, uh, oh, Moses and Abraham did this by faith, and all those different, she said, read down more to the verse like 24 or whatever, where it says that these people, you know what I mean, that they, they weren't worthy, to, that this world wasn't worthy of these people. These people were lived in caves and, and they ran for their lives and, and, and some of them were, were cut in half. They cut them in half because of their faith. They ripped them apart. They, they, you know, I mean, some, you know, uh, you know, it said that some quenched the fire and some shut the mouth of lions and different stuff, but others, they went through hell and they were murdered for, for their faith and stuff. And she said, and it's, you know what I mean, and it's hard to run this race. Hmm? Because you see so many people in this world's taking them out. You with me? This world and the devil, man, he's good at what he does and he's pulling them out and he's stealing them. And he, could you imagine God's heart when he sees the, the addiction problem in our city? You think God's happy about that? They weren't his children. They were all messed up on these drugs or, or, or whatever it is that are living on the streets that are homeless, you know what I mean? God, his heart is broken. They are his children. Yeah. He loves them. Yeah. You with me? And, you know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, and, uh, but I was talking about, you know, I was appreciating you and, 
And I, I want to share with you a scripture out of Philippians chapter 1. Turn there. We do appreciate you. Oscar, no, Kala Limon. We do appreciate you. You know, sometimes we may not say it. You know. I don't know, sometimes it's hard though. You know how it is, you expect so much of your kids, you know? And, and you know what I mean? That's the way my son is. You know, I guess maybe I expect too much out of him. Maybe that burden's been on him for all his life, you know? And, and uh, I, just, I just want him to, to do good, you know? To, to, I just want him to be happy in life and not miserable. But I do appreciate my son. I appreciate my, my, my son-in-laws, my daughter-in-law. I appreciate, you know, my wife, who puts up with so much. You guys don't even know. Philippians chapter 1, and I'm going to start with verse 3. He says, every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. He says, whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy for you have been my partners in spreading the, God, the good news about Christ from the, from the time you first heard it until now Amen How many know that you guys are our partners in this, in this, in this kingdom in this faith We're together, we're one You with me? And you guys are, you know, and, and, and I don't know, you know what I mean, what you do in your life, but I'm sure that you witness, and I'm sure that you share your faith with people. Keep doing that. Keep doing that, because you're not doing it for me or even for yourself. You're doing it for God. Amen. Share your faith with people and let them know. Let them know out there what God has done for you. Amen. Because He's the one that you serve. Amen. You guys have been our partners and said in spreading the good news from about Christ from, for the, from the first time. Uh, that you first heard it until now. He says, And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, he says, will continue his work until it is finally finished. Uh, on the day of when Christ Jesus returns. I like it with the way it reads better. I think it's in the King James, he said, he that began a good work in you is able to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. See, each and every one of you that are here, and every one of you that I mentioned, God began a work in you. And, and there are a lot of times, you know what I mean, it is, because there's a lot of, it just seems like there's so much expected of us, right? Yeah? yeah? yeah. Even as a Christian, there's so much expected. You're supposed to walk that straight and narrow, bro. Yeah. That's hard. It's hard to do. It's easy to run the other way. It's easy to go the crooked path. Yeah. It's hard because pastor expects you to do good. And you, and you know, yeah. your, your, your family expects you, now that you're a Christian, to walk the straight and narrow. Yeah. And it's hard. Yeah. you got that devil and everything pulling against you. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yesterday, I think Oski and them were at the, these farms out here at the pumpkin patches. They had this one balloon thing, you know, in houses they blow up. And one of them had two tracks on it. And I guess you compete against each other. And you go all the way to the back of it. And they hook you up with a spring, like a bungee cord or something. And you'd, you'd race each other, I think. I didn't see it. But you, you'd be in the big old balloon things. And you'd run as fast as you could. And that bungee would start getting tired. And as you went, that thing would shh, it'd pull you backwards and slam you back you know, backwards, and I said, you know, sometimes that seems like the Christian walk of faith. Sometimes. Is that sometimes you're, you, you know, I mean, you're doing so good, you run hard for God, and that devil snaps you right back to where you were, you know, and it's like, how did I end up here on my back again? Yeah. Hmm? But he that began a good work in you, I mean, God is greater than the devil. Amen. God is greater than the devil, and he that started a good work in you, he's able to finish it. He's able to complete it even against, even in spite of ourselves. Yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah. Even in spite of our stubbornness and our sinfulness and our fearfulness and our, you know, shamefulness, even in spite of us, God's still able to complete. He's going to fix you. Yeah. 
He's going to make you into the person you want to be. You know what I mean? Because you surrender to Him. Amen. You with me? He's going to, come on somebody. Huh? He's going to make you into that person, whether you want to be or not, Jonah. Huh? He's going to make you into that person. You can run, but you can't hide. Because somewhere along the line, God touched your life. And he's never going to give up on you. He's never going to quit on you. That's what he was saying. He that began a good work in you is faithful to complete it or able to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen? Um, so it is right that I should, should feel as I do about all of you. Amen? Amen? As your pastor, I feel a certain way Amen. about you. Amen. And sometimes maybe you take that the wrong way. But it's like God, it's like you see my daughter said, we're, we're a shepherd. And our job is to guard you, to guide you, to govern you, even sometimes against yourself. Yeah. And that's hard. Because you think we're coming against you and we're not, we're trying to help you. And we've been around this for many, many years and we know, listen, your biggest enemy is not going to be the devil with the red face. That's right. It's going to be you. That's right. And you're going to want to do things and go places and feel things and, and experience things that are not good for you. That's right. And our job is to say, hey, no, 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 don't do that. Don't go there. Amen. You with me? Yeah. Don't, don't, don't allow that in your life. I like you. I want you. Why are you against me? I, I don't want to go to that church. Trying to control me. It's like, no, we're trying to help you. That's right, man. Amen. You with me? Amen. He said, it's right that it's all right that I feel this way about you. I mean, it's about like you parents that are here. And you, and you feel like somebody's trying to steal your child from you. Yeah. You feel like that other lady is trying to, they want them to go over there. And all of a sudden they're sleeping over there, eating over there. They don't even want to come home. And you feel jealous. Yeah. God's jealous for you. You don't think he puts that heart in his pastors that are jealous for you? Yeah. You with me? Yeah. That feel a certain way or, or maybe you feel hurt when you don't come? Yeah. You with me? Yeah. You, you understand? Yeah. We get hurt too. Yeah. We get feeling we got feelings too. We're not our heart is a rock. You know? We got feelings too. He said it's alright. He says, so it is right that I should feel this as I do about you, about all of you. Not just one of you, about all of you. Amen. He says, for you have a special place in my heart. Amen? Amen. You share with me the, the special favor, the grace of God. Amen? Amen. Uh, both, in my, both in my imprisonment and in defending and confirming the truth. Of the God of the good news, Amen. And I was thinking about that. I was saying, you know, Paul was writing this when he was in prison. He would write letters to the church to encourage him and tell him stuff. And and and, and a lot of times you got to understand that thirty years. You know, I was thinking, I was sitting there, and I'm thinking, you know what, you know, you know, you know what we've done for you. And it may be before you ever even knew us, before you ever even heard of us, before you ever even came to our church. But 31 years ago, going on 32 years in one month, Amen. we dedicated our lives to God. Amen. Me and my wife and our two daughters, and then Amber came. Amen. We dedicated our lives and our family to God. Amen. And we sacrificed when, they, when, when they, uh, Vincent came, when Naomi came in our lives. We went to church every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. We made prayer nights up. We would go to the church and pray. We sacrificed. We prayed for many, many years. And even when we started our own ministry, you know, I mean, we've given everything, houses and cars and everything up, you know, I mean, and it's sacrificed for you. Even when you didn't even know us, there's things that you do. Remember I said, you're a result of what you did yesterday. Amen. Hmm? Amen. The choices you made yesterday are the result, the reason you're in the condition you are today, right. whether good or bad. Right. And many, many years ago, we made good decisions to serve the Lord. Everything that you guys see us doing now, we've done for 32 years already. Fasted and prayed and went to church and served and reached our community and did outreaches like crazy and all this stuff for all these years. 
And every single time we prayed, and for a whole year, every night, we prayed every single night for a whole year. It was for you. Amen. Some of you didn't even know us. Some of you maybe weren't even born yet. And yet it was for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sacrifices and things that we've done. See, Paul was making sacrifices for these people. Amen. Paul was in prison, and I thought, well, what kind of prison? You know what I mean? But you don't understand as a, as a pastor, you know what I mean? What, what prison sometimes you live in. That's right. Hmm? That's right. Sometimes you're hated by your own congregation because of what you preach. Huh? People will leave, people will say stuff about you that you've helped and you've done this and you know what I mean? And sometimes you, you're, 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 ex, you're, you're like expected to live that you can see through, you know, the glass. But you guys live in houses like this where I can't see you. Where yeah. you hide in those homes. Where you run away too. You with me? And I'm expected, me and my wife are expected to live in a glass house where you guys see everything because we put our hearts on this altar. We don't come up here and play this, you know, game where we put this mask on and, hey, how you doing? And, you know, amen. And then when, we, when we're done, shh, man, can't stand those people. <laughs> it's open. It's, it's out there. Paul says you have many, many teachers, but only one father, yeah. one spiritual father, one person that God has placed in your life to help you and stuff like that. And at times our, our fathers and our mothers are our enemies. Amen. Can't stand when we hate them because we think they're trying to control our lives and yet they're just trying to help us. Mm -hmm. I hated my stepdad. He would say stuff that I needed to repent, that I needed to stop hurting my mother, that I needed, and I don't even know what the word means, genuflect. And all this different stuff, and, and, and I was, uh, you know, this and that, and you know, and I hated him. And, but when I got saved and understood that he was just trying to do his best to raise somebody else's kids, Amen. who in the world wants to raise two little boys from some woman that, that they're not even his, and they're brats and they're spoiled, and they're and they're 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 they're, they're the worst of the worst. Jumping on things and tearing things up and breaking windows and, and getting in trouble and all. Who wants to raise a couple of kids like that? They're not yours. And yet he did that. Right. He, he spent the time and he, he worked hard for us. And you know what I mean? And, and it's like, you know, and now I understand that. Yeah. Amen. I understand that he had, you know what I mean? He just did his best. He didn't do the great, greatest job, but he did his best. Right, man. And sometimes that's all we can do as pastors is our best. We don't know it all. How many of you have made mistakes raising your children? Man. And you look back and you know they say, but she, but she wasn't like that with me. And the grandkids give them candy and <laughs> treats them all nice and feeds them and all this meat. Make yourself full. <laughs> and when you remember dad, he wouldn't even give you a dollar. He wouldn't give you no money, and now you see him with the grandkids, and he's all there giving them fives and tens, and, and, and being nice, and he's like, that, that man right there wasn't the same one I grew up with. Cheap state, you know? People change. People learn through mistakes, and so do pastors. They learn through mistakes. We don't know it all. We don't know. And sometimes we have to learn you. Many of you have been around a long time, but others have just come in, and we don't know you yet. You know a lot about us, but we know very little about you. You know what I mean? And we don't know you yet. And sometimes it's a standoffish thing. And it's like, how are you going to get to know people? They won't open their hearts to you. Yeah. Paul asks, open your heart to us the way we've opened our heart to you. Amen. And sometimes you don't get the same affection. Sometimes you don't get the same consideration. Yeah. Amen. People expect so much of us and, and yet so little of themselves. Sometimes that's hard, you know what I mean? Because you have to you have to live with that. You have to go home as pastors and swallow your pride and swallow, you know what I mean, the way you feel. Some of you feel a certain way. You get angry, you want to say something. Yeah. You know how many times we wanted to say something and have to swallow our pride and have it go kneel down and say, God help me. Yeah. God forgive me for being angry at this person. God forgive me for, for, you know what I mean, saying this or doing that or, you know what I mean, because we're human too. Right. You with me? Yeah. And sometimes, you know what I mean, we, we have to take ours to the altar. We have to take ours and swallow that big old lump in our throat and cry sometimes. 
I don't understand it. Well, why do we have to be the big person all the time? Why do we have to be the one to say we're sorry all the time? Why can't they, Lord? Huh? If you want to call them a few choice words, you can't. Because God expects more of you. God wants more of you. You with me? Yeah. Amen. 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 Huh? Let me move on here. Where am I on here? God knows how much that I love you and long for you with the, with the tender compassion of Christ Jesus. I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding for I want for I want you to understand what really what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return may you always be filled uh, with the fruit of your salvation the righteous the righteous character produced in you or in your life by Jesus Christ for this will bring much glory and praise to God Amen. and all Paul wanted them to do was to, to live good for the Lord that's all he wants you with me? Amen. that's what you want for your children right? right. To, to live a good life, to be a good person, to be a productive yeah. citizen, to yeah. help other people, to give. You know what a blessing it is, you know what I mean, to see your kids, especially the baby, Amen. get up here with a heart like that and, and to be talking about her pastors, the way she, not her parents, her pastors. Amen. Giving her heart, you know what I mean, and crying at this altar. And it's not a show. She means that with all her heart. And you see that in your children and say, wow, you know what I mean? They're learning. I think the younger ones, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know, I don't know. It's like they're, because they're around dad. Amen. The older ones get away from dad. Yeah. They're out there living their own lives and they're out there hopefully going to church somewhere, but not as close as they used to be with God. You know, and, 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 and living in it. You know, when you get away from mom and dad, you have a tendency to start doing stuff you shouldn't do. Yeah. Drinking, tattooing, partying. You with me? Yeah. Living uh, like the people around you. And you can either conform to the people around you or you can still continue, even if you're far away, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind by staying in this book right here. And that's hard to do. It is hard to do. Amen. You with me? Amen. As long as you're around, even the church, you know what I mean? You're closer, it seems, with God. Yeah. And even the, 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 the more you stay away from the church and the things of God, the more you realize, wow, I'm starting to look like the world and feel like the world and act like the world. I don't even want to go to church. Yeah. Because you're away from it. Peter. When he denied Christ, he was warming at the fire of sinners. And he heard the cock crow three times. You with me? Yeah. And he's warming at the, at the same fire as he used to warm at. There were a bunch of sinners. You don't want to be back over there. That's right. It's easy to get back over there. That's right. It's hard to stay close to the Master because there's so much expected of you. That's right, man. You with me? Right. And you have right. to live the up and up. You come to church and you hear this and... And it convicts your heart at times, and you're like, oh man, and it should. You with me? I don't come up here, and I don't, even the messages that I preach, sometimes I preach to you, I'll go home and I'll watch them the next day, and I'll be listening to the words, I'll be listening to the message, and I'm like, man, convict my heart, Lord God. I'll listen to Pastor Ray on the thing, and it convicts my heart. Amen. God, I just want to be close. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. And sometimes it just seems like, you know what I mean, it's just a hard thing to do. Because there's, you with me? Man. Because there's, there's ex high expectations of your children. Man. I mean, you know, the nephews and the nieces and the friends and all that you look and they, well, you know, you, you, you can tell them stuff, but your children, what are they telling you? Right. You need to stop it. You need to behave. You're representing me out there. Man. Huh? Yeah. Amen. And they expect it, and maybe sometimes it's not. You know, I don't know. Pushes them away, maybe. Yeah. 
You with me? Nah. But I've known, you know what I mean, over the years I've learned, you know what I mean, that, you know, it's, you know, man, it's, it's, good. it's an awesome privilege to serve the Lord. It's just so hard to do. Amen. It's just so hard to do. Right. And to try and encourage others, come on, guys, come on, keep, keep up. Let's go. No, 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 get over here. Like my daughter was saying. And sometimes they don't want to. You with me? And it's one thing if you're a sheep, you know, just, well, whatever, I'm going. But when you're the shepherd, your heart is broken. And my pastor told me that, Pastor Tony, I remember years ago, me and Pastor Mitch, you know, we would pray, and we would, come on, Pastor Tony, tell the congregation, you know, you know, Pastor Tony would say, hey, wait a minute, bro. You know, he said, man, you guys are on fire, you guys want to do this and do that, and that's great. He said, but I, as the shepherd, have to wait for the rest of them. And I didn't understand that. You with me? I didn't understand the heart of a shepherd. All I was a zeal, fired up for Jesus, wanting to oh, do this. And if you don't want to come home, oh, whatever. <laughs> and that heart of a shepherd, sometimes you're torn because you've got some that want to lead and some that want to do great and others that want to straggle. And you're like, yeah, get over here. Where are you going? And you watch them and they get torn out by the wolves. And you see them and they're being eaten and your heart is broken. You with me? And you see him die. We've seen him. You know? And it's, it's just hard. You know? Because you're hard, a heart of a shepherd. You know? I think it was uh, Jeremiah 15. I think Naomi, the one time you, you said that God will give them shepherds after his own heart. Not after your own heart, after God's own heart. Yeah. And they'll shepherd my flock with wisdom and understanding. And, uh, you know what I mean? And that's hard. Yeah. You with me? Because as a shepherd, you know, you got, you know, but man, I'm telling you what, I, I thank God that he chose me, and I thank God he's given me favor and wisdom and understanding, but at the same time, I'm still me, I'm still human. Amen. And I got faults, and I got, you know what I mean, things in my life, and it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Ah, ah, I, could, I said the other day, oh, wretched man that I am, who could save me from this body of death? Thank God for Jesus. I know what Paul was talking about. Amen. I feel trapped between two worlds. Yeah. You with me? And it's easy just to hang it up and give up. And, and it's hard to stay on track. You know what I mean? And that's why I say, you've been seeing people serving God for years and really serving God. Honor them individuals. Amen. Honor them individuals because it ain't easy. And some of you know, you've been around and maybe you've been in and out for years. But there's been people that have been faithful to God for all the years, and it's hard, and, and it ain't easy. And when you see them, honor them people, man, and respect them, and learn from them, listen to what they're saying. Amen. You with me? Amen. And, and Amen. You'll, you'll see God use you. Amen. And God will put people in your life that you start to love, and you start to, and you know what I mean? And it's like, not a, not a bad thing, it's not a worldly thing, it's a godly Amen. thing. And you want to help, and you're jealous for them. What do you mean you want to go over there to the other church? Yeah. You're going to go do over there. Get over here. You need to be here. That's like somebody's, you know, telling your kids want to go eat at that lady's house. You want to go sleep at that lady's house. And you're you're my children. Get over here. I got your bed there, food on the table waiting for you, and they don't want you. That's right. And you get hurt because you're, right. je you're jealous for them. Yeah. You got to understand the pastor's heart. But that's the way they feel too. You with me? And that's the way my wife feels too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's hard, you know, because she puts up with so much. She's got so many things going on. It's like, my God, sit down, lady. You're not cleaning, you're doing something, you're on the phone, somebody's calling, and this and that. And it's like, man, the life, I can't, I, I'll stress out if I hang around her too long, man. But from all the grandkids and all the daughters and sons and, and, and this and that, and then the church and. And then Denver, all this different stuff, and it's like, wow. You know what I mean? Amen. It's heavy load. Amen. You know what I mean? But it's like, you know what? We keep on trucking, man. Amen. We just keep on walking. We don't quit. We don't give up. We, we continue. And one of these days, he said, we'll receive that, that, that crown of life. Amen. And the soul, I don't remember what crown he said that as pastors in First Peter 5, he said, but you're going to receive a crown. I don't know if it's righteousness or or what? But he said, one day as a pastor, you're going to receive a, a special crown for the pastors. And I said, Lord, I want, I want that crown. I want to be faithful. Even if it is with a handful, I want to be faithful as if I would be with a thousand people. Amen. Huh? 
Amen. 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 I want to give it my whole heart and my whole soul, and it just gets overwhelming at times. Amen. But I, I don't quit. I don't give up. I don't need your pity. I need your prayers. Amen. 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 Stand with me this morning. I thought I had a water somewhere. Sometimes you share your heart and give your, give your all and people are looking at you like cows at a new gate. Yeah, like there's emoji, I always say my wife, but I don't know, I know some. It's just like a, like a weird, like a, you know, for me you're like that. That's, man, you're pouring your heart out here. And that's hard to do. Because you want to see people, or get, you know what I mean, get into it, get a mouth flow, or maybe shed one tear, and it's like, heck no, there's no tear coming out of that eye, huh? unless I didn't get paid. <laughs> I don't understand this, God. <laughs> oh, Lord. May we keep moving, we keep going on. Amen. Amen. Can you call your mom in here, Naomi? Yes. Yeah. Probably cooking and cleaning and setting up and watching kids. I just want you to come and close the service. Hmm? Yeah, Naomi, if you can. Yes. But I just want you to say anything and close. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is so good. Um, God is amazing. He's so good. This is the day that God has made, and we're just going to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we just thank you that you're an awesome God. We thank